Hey folks, uh, welcome back. This is Joel, and uh, uh, I thought I'll make um, a, a few series of videos on SD WAN technology. Uh, so this is going to be a quick video on a refresher, um, which would basically where I'll be talking about the fundamentals of SD WAN, um, and uh, which would serve as a base for some of the lab exercises or lab videos which I'll be making in the future. Right? Uh, let's start. So. Uh, we have uh, in our earlier videos we have talked about SDN, especially in our campus network where we talked about SD access, right? So why do we need SDN for WAN, right? So if you look at the current uh, scenario, you have uh, uh, a lot of uh, churn or a lot of changes happening in the WAN space, right? So you have uh, uh, more users, right, coming coming in, right? You have more users. Uh, you want more bandwidth, right? Um, at your branches, right? You have a lot of SaaS based applications, right? Like your Office six, uh, 365, right? So you have uh, um, uh, more applications on the cloud, more applications, you know, migrated on the cloud. Um, especially with the COVID, you would have seen there are a lot of, you know, there's a huge search, uh, search in uh, work from home happening, right? So you would want your branch sites to directly get the internet access rather, you know, uh, having uh, it, uh, you know, backhauled to the headquarters, right? So branch having internet access. So these are some of the most important, you know, uh, scenarios right now in the WAN space, right? So legacy WAN architectures are facing challenges. Why? Because in the legacy architectures, you normally have like a multiple, you know, MPLS transports or a MPLS paired with the internet, uh, right? Um, more often with internet or SaaS traffic being backhauled, you know, to the center data center or a regional hub. So issues with these architectures include what? In insufficient bandwidth, right? Along with high bandwidth cost because MPLS is way costly, right? Uh, so how about I use my internet, uh, not just as active standby fashion, rather use my internet to actually drive the traffic to some of these SaaS based applications, right? So the, um, you know, to improve the SaaS performance, right? Uh, uh, and yeah, so, um, and also uh, the whole uh, SDN framework, you know, you, it brings in some amazing capabilities when you talk about, uh, uh, you know, policies, right? Uh, the, the main power or the workforce of, uh, uh, of the whole SDN or the SD-WAN uh, solution is the, um, is, the, is the agility which it brings with uh, defining these uh, very intelligent policies, right? So, uh, in in if I have to summarize, uh, SD WAN for me personally, right? Uh, if I have to look at or if I have to pinpoint on one important thing of SD WAN is that it is going to help me to intelligently, you know, switch traffic or uh, not just switch, you know, load balance and do various things uh, between the multiple transports, right? So you might have MPLS, you might have internet, you might have LTE. So how do you leverage all these transports in an intelligent way so that you can drive probably some time critical applications maybe on the MPLS, whereas SaaS applications you can still use the internet to connect, right? So this is this is the huge change happening in the WAN space and SDN uh, along with uh, uh, SDN with I mean SD WAN is just a form of SDN form of WAN, right? So uh, it's basically driving this change, right? So today we'll be just talking mainly on the Cisco SD WAN, uh, you know, solution, which is uh, uh, Viptela, right, based, uh, which was, you know, Cisco acquired this company, uh, uh, I think a few years back. And uh, this, this is turning out to be a very good product for Cisco. Um, so let me just quickly, I'm, I'm pretty bad with my drawing, so I'm just going to try my best to put in some uh, uh, flows here, just so that I can explain some of the stuff, right? So let's start with uh, architecture. Right. So when I'm talking about architecture, uh, some of the things which I want to talk here is what are the various pieces, right? So uh, we'll start with what you have the we manage, right? So you have a we manage. Uh, I'll explain what what it does, right? Let me also draw the other important piece, which is the we bond. Then you have the we smart, right? And the other interesting piece, um, not mandatory but let me just still put it down here maybe like something like a ZTP or a PNP server right uh, the other interesting piece is the edges right so the edges are going to be everywhere right so um, you know this is your uh, you can say your van edge right so I've just drawn a bunch of stuff here 
right? You might be confused on what, what are these, what are these boxes? So uh, <clears throat> let's, let's start or let's break this, right? Let's start with uh, the various planes, right? Let's break it into planes. I think that'll be easier. So from a diagram perspective, if you have to start with the first one, let me use a different color. Uh, let's start with the, uh, my favorite one is the orchestration. Right, so this is the orchestration plane. So in the orchestration plane, the node which comes into play is the V bond, right? This one. So V bond, V bond is just a node, right? Just like your, um, um, it's it's going to be running on a server, right? Uh, it's you can consider it to be just like any other device in the network, right? So V V bond it orchestrates, you know, the control and the management plane, right? It's like the first point of authentication when any of the other devices in the network comes up, right? So this WAN edges, whenever the WAN edges comes up, it is going to connect up to the V bond. I'll show you the whole, uh, you know, uh, flow, how that works, but just want you to know that V bond here is basically there to, you know, facilitate the authentication piece of the whole SD-WAN to, uh, it also does a little bit when it comes to NAT traversal, right? So if any of your other controllers, so this this all these three which I've drawn here at the top, so all these three you can consider to be the controllers of SD WAN, right? And if any of the controllers are behind a uh, NAT device or any of the edges are behind a NAT uh, NAT device, uh, V bond is um, uh, is going to facilitate or is going to help you uh, help the device uh, or is going to communicate it to the device that hey you are behind a um, you know NAT device and this is your public IP and this is a private IP, right? So all of that. So we'll get to know more of this as we do the labs and all of that, right? Just know for a minute that, you know, we bond is the orchestrator. Next is the we manage. Let's talk about we manage. So second plane, which um, I would go with uh, the is your we manage, right? So you have your we manage, which is this one, right? So the we manage uh, is a single pane of glass for all your day zero, day one, day two operations, right? It's a GUI based. Um, you know, it centralizes uh, the provisioning, right? Uh, where this is the place where you can put in your policies, you can put in your templates, you can do your troubleshooting, monitoring, and all of that, right? It's a sing single or a single stop for your whole SD WAN operations. Next is the control. The control plane is very important, right? So let me use a different color, right? So you have your control plane. Now, the control plane, what is happening in the control plane? which is the vSmart over here, right? So the vSmart is the control plane control. It facilitates uh, more on the lines of the fabric discovery, right? Um, uh, it reduces the whole control plane complexity, which we had in the past. Um, it distributes your data plane and, you know, app aware routing policies to the VH routers, right? Uh, uh, in simple terms, basically in SD1, we have a new protocol. We'll talk more about this protocol later. It's the OMP protocol. Right, overlay management protocol, and we smart. Right, you can consider it to be something like a route reflector. Right, in your normal uh, technologies, you have heard of route reflector and route reflector clanch. So basically, that is what it is. We smart is just like a route reflector. Right, so it is going to learn the routes from all the VHS and going to it's going to reflect it to the other VHS. Right, you can consider it to be as simple as that. I'm trying to map them to the traditional technology because then it becomes easier, right, for us to understand. And the last um, piece, I'll talk about ZTP probably uh, after this, uh, but let me cover the most other imp important part, which is my, um, which is my edges, right? Or V edges or van edges, whatever, right? So these are the van edges over here, right? The van edges are your regular routers, right? Uh, so when Viptela has its own routers uh, uh, or uh, has its own edges, they are called as V edges. Uh, but then um, you know, once Cisco acquired, right, Cisco enabled the SD-WAN functionality on some of the Cisco routers as well, which are like ISR 4K, ASR 1K, and so on, right? So you have these special SD-WAN IOSXE images, which you need to put it, put or enable on these routers and they quickly turn up, you know, or into your SD-WAN edges, right? But these are your edges. These are those, you know, forwarding planes where, you know, the data forwarding actually happens, right? So you can... Uh, when you're talking about the, the Viptela V edges, you have both phys physical and the virtual form factors, right? Similarly, in Cisco's also, you have like the, um, you basically call the Cisco edges as C edges, 
right? And you have, like I said, ISR4K, ASR1K. You can also run the CSR1-1000V, right, which is a virtual router. Even that also can be enabled for SD1, right? Um, it also supports, now this is where, you know, whenever you have to bring a new site up, you have to bring a new edge up, right? Uh, and if you don't want to do the configuration manually, that's where your ZTP comes into picture, right? So I wouldn't call ZTP as a separate plane, but rather it's something which is going to facilitate, uh, you know, for you to quickly bring up your edges without any uh, major, uh, you know, major configurations as such, right? Um, yeah, so I'll talk about all these components again when I talk about how they all interlink and work together. Uh, but that's majorly it. So now let me just show you, uh, before we, we move on to the next stage, let me just show you how or uh, how these both, or how all these, you know, I just kind of like um, talk to each other, right? So uh, starting with the control plane, right? Like I said, control plane is basically your OMP. And right? let me use the same color. I think I was using purple one here, right? So I'm talking mainly of the control plane. So the control plane is between what? The edges and the vSmarts, right? So it's going to be this one. This is going to be your control plane, right? So like I said, there won't be any control plane between the edges. So the edges are not going to talk to each other using OMP. The OMP sessions are only going to be between what? The edges and the smarts, right? So there is going to be communication um, you know, the edges are going to tell the vSmart about their routes, right, which are probably sitting behind over here. And the vSmart, uh, based on some policies which is applied on the vSmart, is then going to kind of, um, you know, relay this information to the other, uh, uh, you know, edges which are down here, right? And the same thing happens vice versa. So that's your control plane. We'll talk a little bit about the OMP later. Moving on to the data plane. The data plane is basically going to be something as simple as IPsec, right? So here, once once the edges comes to know about um, about a route, like for example, there is say let's say it's a route 10.1.10, right? And this uh, prefix, you know, has been advertised to vSmart, and from vSmart, this guy has learned it, right? Now this guy probably wants to talk to the edge or wants to talk to this particular network. How does he do? He's going to end up creating what do you say? Uh, a uh, let me just use a different color. So he's going to end up creating an IPsec tunnel, right? So similarly, he can create IPsec tunnel here as well, or here, right, and so on. So these are going to be the IPsec um, tunnels, which is mainly going to form the data plane, right? So uh, just to recap, on the control plane, we have a new protocol, which is the OMP, right, which is the, between vSmarts and VHS. And on the data plane, we have uh, the older IPsec, uh, you know, um, protocols, which we have been using, so IPsec tunnels would be created between the edges, right, um, based on the information which I have received using the OMP protocol, and I'm going to create my tunnel so that I can talk to my peer and exchange information, right? And the last is the management plane. The management plane, let me use a different color, which was the blue one over here. Let me use a blue, um, do I have a blue? Yep, or this one, okay. So for the management plane, you know, all these uh, edges, right, they'll be reachable via, the v manager. they are all going to register themselves, right? And, uh, you know, they'll have connectivity to the v manager. As a result, you know, you will be able to push all the configuration, do all centralized monitoring, you know, from v manager. So that's mainly your three important parts, right? One is your uh, control plane, which was OMP, data plane, which is IPsec, and the management plane, which is between your v manager and uh, the edges, right? And obviously, I have not shown here, but it is understood that, you know, um, the v manage, the vbond, and vsmart, all of these also have the connectivity, right? Because they also need to be managed, right? So they also will have connectivity. So we manage will know about vbond, vbond will know about vsmart, we manage, and everything. So all these guys will be also talking to each other, right? So uh, hope that's clear. We have just talked about the various pieces of the architecture. We have talked about the four important planes, the orchestration plane, the management plane, the control plane, and the data plane. Right, and we have also talked about uh, how uh, all of these planes like work together. Okay, now the next thing which I want to go about is, you know, how do when I when I kind of bring up, let me just delete this. Love this feature about the whiteboard. Just it allows me to delete everything in one single shot. Okay, so that's good. Um, so now let's just quickly talk about 
when the whole sd1 fabric comes up right how does it all work together right uh, i mean we have talked about all these pieces separately now let's talk about how it all works out together right so let's start by uh, probably um, let me just go down here let's put the various pieces which we talked about right we have the v manage here we have the v bond right we have the v smart what else um we let's also put the ztp um uh, then we'll put the van edge right let's also put another van edge just to show the communication between the van edges right and if i just let's just see if i can put a straight line right okay so we have something to talk right so that's good so let me just um uh, you know explain the workflow um, let me just storyboard this right let me just try to say what happens when the whole fabric comes up right let me use uh, different color probably to show the different ones okay probably a red a little bit okay so step one what happens the first guy to come up is your v bond right so the v bond is going to come up right like i said all these nodes you can uh, you can install it on a EXXI server, right? These are all nodes, like basically like your VMs, right? So then the VM comes up, right? He's going to be um, <clears throat> uh, he's going to be added to the vManage, right? So the vManage, let's assume for a minute that vManage has been installed on a VM, vBond has been installed, the vSmart also has been installed, right? Basically took the image from the CCO and you installed it. Now, when I say installed, let's also assume for a minute that all these three have connectivity, right? Their management interfaces have connectivity. So if they have connectivity, the first step is you, um, you know, I mean, when you when you install vManage, you also need to mention the vBond's IP address, right? Um, so what happens is that, uh, so this, this is the first step, right? You go and add the vBond's IP address to vManage. So that's how vManage comes to know about vBond. Now, once vManage knows about vBond, next what happens is the vManage is going to issue um, a certificate and it's going to authenticate, right? It's going to authenticate the uh, vBond because, you know, you don't want some random vBond coming and connecting to your vManage. So, you, you, I mean, in sd one everything happens via certificates, right? Every authentication happens via certificate and every session is a DTLS session, right? SSL, uh, you would have heard. So, this is literally, you know, that. So uh, yeah, so vBond comes up, vBond is added to vManage and vManage, you know, issues certificate and tries to authenticate the vBond based on the credentials which have been, you know, earlier added to vManage, right? So there is a relationship or there's a connection established between these two guys. Next, what happens? The vSmart comes up, right? The vSmart comes up and uh, even that is added to vManage, right? So once it is added to vManage, the same process happens. There's going to be something like a issuing certificate happening here, right? There was a certificate here. Let's say there was a certificate issued here, right? Once the certificate is issued, uh, you know, there are different ways to do it. You can run your own, uh, you know, enterprise root CS server, or you can use the semantics, uh, you know, uh, if you have internet connectivity, you can use the automated semantic server and so on. But for a minute, let's assume that, you know, vManage is, issuing a certificate to vSmart, right? The next is uh, <clears throat> uh, the vManage also, what it does is it uploads the vSmart information to vBond, right? Because like I said, vBond is the orchestrator. He is like the center of everything. All the authentication has to happen via vBond, right? So uh, he's going to upload the information about the vSmart to my uh, vBond. Now the vBond is going to connect and try to authenticate, you know, it tries to authenticate the vSmart, right? Because that's its job. So once authentication has been successful, you have now connection here as well. So let me use a different color just to call out that we have a connection. So we have a DTLS connection between these both already. Now we have it here as well between vBond and v, um, you know, your uh, v, uh, vBond and vSmart. And we also, because this guy has validated it, there's also going to be a DTLS, you know, connection here as well active. From vSmart to vManage because at the end of the day, vManage is the one who is managing all these controllers, right? So you need to have some connection. Next, what do we do? So now we have to get our edges up, right? These edges are going to be there on different sites all over probably the state or all over the country, right? Wherever you have the branches, 
right now the different edges are coming up so before they come up you have to have uh, let's say for now uh, 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 a list of devices which you basically generate from the cisco's pnp portal right so you need to have a device list because you need to tell we manage you know as per the contract what are the list of devices you have purchased right so this device list has to be you know kind of like added to your we manage over here right there will be a device list so you add the device list so that we manage knows what is the device list right and once he gets it he's going to promptly give it to we bond right and we bond is also going to give that information to uh, the uh, this thing smart as well right good so now <clears throat> we have this amazing edge sitting here idle he is going to start coming up right because like i said the edges are residing on the branches so when the router boots up right it is going to come up right and it will try to connect to a url right which is the something like it will be uh, I'm, I'm just making this up it might not be exactly this it is going to come up um, and it's trying to it will try to get an ip address from a dhcp and then it will try to connect to a url something like ztp.cisco.com right or ztp.biptela.com something like that right so you need to uh, make sure that you have a dns right to resolve this and um, once it once it's resolved it basically connects to this ztp server and this ztp is going to provide the edge with the information about the v bond right so it is very very important that your v bond have a public ip address right because uh, you know your edges would be somewhere uh, you know in a in a branch and they have to over the internet connect to this v bond because authentication or allowing a edge into a sd wan basically depends upon the authentication which happens between your v bond and v edge right so once you once the edge gets the information about the v bond it is going to do what authentication right it's trying to connect it will try to connect here and try to authenticate right and once let's say um, you know so everything about certificates and authentication everything happens here right uh, so once you have the uh, uh, authentication up then the v bond also is going to give you some information as to how you can reach the v manage and v smart right so by now you have a dtls connection set up here right the, between these guys as well which is good now uh, so since i have received information about my about v manage and v smart i'm going to go and connect to them so i'm going to connect to my uh, v manage and <clears throat> obtain the configuration because like i said this v manage is amazing it has it is a place where you can define some config templates you can say hey when when an edge comes up you know basically push this configuration on it right so you can do all of that over here so on the v manage we are going to we can create such kind of templates and when an edge comes up you can gracefully push this template onto it so once the connection is done we are going to basically go and push in the config so this is where you know you get the configuration as well basically like a bootstrap config right so by now we also have a connection here so we have a connection between the edge and the v manage sweet and uh, that is it i mean uh, we have the configuration and uh, the last piece of this i don't know if i have space here do i have probably let me just shrink this yeah so the last piece of this is we will uh, i mean let's what has happened now my edge has the configuration but the edge has to now uh, be admitted into the control plane right because like i said v smart is like my route reflector right it has all the routing information i need to connect to my v smart to understand the route so that i can be part of the st1 family right so that is where you know our v edge is going to now go and connect to my v smart here right so it's going to authenticate obviously and once authentication happens right so you're going to get some omp routes over here right those omp basically the protocol which i was talking earlier right so once i have that let's also put in a connection here so you'll have a connection between these both guys and once i have the routes now this is this becomes fun now imagine v edge one and v edge two have come up right let's say in your whole sd1 fabric you have just two edges and both the edges have gone through all the steps which i've described here now they'll be ready to forward traffic right let me use a different color now here at this point they'll be ready to forward traffic why because both of the edges you know they have 
they have they have been authenticated into the fabric they have received the configuration from vmanage right their bootstrap configuration and they have also gone and connected to the vsmarts which is the control plane so the, both of them have the routes right and uh, you know let's say someone behind sitting here behind your uh, vh1 wants to talk to someone behind vh2 right a uh, ipsec tunnel will be formed between these two edges and the traffic is going to flow so that was basically the whole process which happens right the whole uh, you know uh, steps which are involved great so now let me just quickly breeze through the uh, the control and the the uh, control plane maybe the data plane and the management plane right let me see how much of it is there in my memory to uh, recollect but let me see uh, let's just re remove this all right, so let's just get that out. Let's just get this out. Great. So this is not going to take much time. So I'm going to explain quickly about the control plane. Let's start with the control plane, right? So when you're talking about the control plane, uh, we are mainly talking about the protocol, which is the OMP, right? Overlay Management Protocol, right? So how this works is that you have your vSmart here, right? You have the vSmart and uh, let me use a little darker one. I don't know if that's visible, right? So we have the vSmart and you have uh, your edges here, right? You have your edge, let's say edge one, you have another edge two and you have your edge three. Now, like I explained earlier, your V, um, your control plane connection is always going to be between the vSmart and the um, edges like this, right? And there'll be OMP sessions, right? Where uh, various routes are going to be exchanged. So what are these routes? The first route, we call it as a OMP route, right? The second one, we call it as TLOC. And the third route, we are going to call it as the service route, right? Now, what are these? OMP route is basically going to be um, something like this, right? Uh, let me just probably try to, right? So OMP route is basically going to be a prefix, right? Basically a prefix which is sitting behind this edge, right? In a network over here. Right, probably you have some BGP OSPF running there, but that has to be redistributed into the OMP protocol, right? So that it can be advertised, you know, over the over to the vSmart. But basically, in simple terms, it's going to be a prefix, a simple prefix which is sitting behind you. Next is it also going, it is going to have the information something called TLOC. Now, TLOC is a new term which you would have probably not heard before, right? So TLOC is basically a combination of bunch of things. TLOC is a combination of um, a system IP, right? So it's going to be system IP plus color. Color and the last part is NCAP, right? This might seem a little odd or something very, very new, but <clears throat> to make it very simpler, TLOC is, uh, <clears throat> or let, let me explain the individual components first, right? So system IP is basically a unique identifier, more like a, uh, if you have seen a regular routing protocol, you would have defined something like, uh, you know, router ID, something like that, right? So system IP is basically that, right? It is, uh, uh, it's, it's not something which you can use to route, but it's just an identifier for each of the edges, right? So this one will have a system IP, this one will have, and this one will have. Color is basically uh, used to identify a particular transport, right? What I mean by that is because if you see here in this particular diagram, between these VHS, right, you'll obviously have an underlay, right? So let me use a different color to explain that. Yeah. So you'll have a service provider here, right? So you'll have a service provider, probably MPLS, right? And then you'll also have some internet here. Right, so these edges are probably going to be connected, you know, probably via multiple transports, right? Via, you know, to to the other branches, right? So to identify each of these, they have come up with the term called color. So let's say uh, the MPLS is going to be for a minute. Let's assume color is yellow, and uh, you know the internet is going to be color is green, right? So <clears throat> when you because you have multiple transports in your underlay. Right, color is basically used to differentiate and identify, right? 
and encapsulation is basically going to tell you what kind of an encapsulation um, is uh, there between you know between the tunnels right which we talked earlier the ipsec or the gri right so t lock is mainly for that so t lock is going to um, give you that information so prefix t lock and you probably might have some kind of attributes also over here like any of your bgp attributes so i would say this uh, omp protocol is very very similar to your bgp protocol right t lock could be you can associate or you can map to like a next hop which you have in your normal bgp prefix right bgp route so i think you might have gotten a little bit of understanding so just looking at the omp route i'll be able to understand if i'm sitting down here right and if i want to talk to someone sitting here right and if i look at the prefix let's say the route is x here or prefix is yes so when i look at x from here i'll understand which path i should take right and what kind of encapsulation i should do right and it will also tell me using the t lock i'll understand which edge it is sitting right it kind of helps me understand the location right so it uh, <clears throat> yeah so uh, if i forgot the full form of t lock is transport location it tries to it helps me understand okay if i want to reach here i have to either go like this or i have to go via the other path right so that that should be your understanding when you look at the omp route now uh, second thing is the t lock route right t lock route we we talked about t lock here but t lock if you look at here just looking at this this is not something which you can use for routing right because i said remember t lock is similar to your next stop in bgp right and uh, just looking at this uh, you know you would probably not understand how do i route it or how do i use this inside the routing so t lock route is basically something which will demystify this right so t lock route will try to tell you alone right t lock route alone has the system ip but we uh, <coughs> excuse me right but we need some kind of reachability information right what i mean by that is let's say the site 3 has a t lock system i mean the system id of say 1.1.1.1 this is just a system id right it is not something routable t lock route will try to map this to a to this actual interface over here right maybe the ip address of that is something like you know uh, two, 200 dot one so it will try to map this system ip to something which is reachable right which you can use over here sitting here right you can use so it will try to map this t lock to a public ip right so that is your t lock route so that you can use it to create your tunnels and the last is your system uh, service routes service routes are more like um, <clears throat> uh, you know uh, edge can kind of like tell the rest of the network if it has some kind of services like you know firewall right it can advertise some kind of a service telling that hey <clears throat> i have a, a firewall sitting behind me if you want to send your traffic through my firewall you can use it right so kind of like service chaining and all of that right so these are the various routes which are there in your control plane you'll understand more better when we talk or when we do the lab to be more specific <clears throat> but that's something which i wanted to cover right three important routes omp route t lock route and service route right t lock is something very important here like i said it's a combination of your system ip um, color and encapsulation system ip is just a unique id color basically talks about the various multiple transports which are there identifies the transports and encapsulation is going to be um, something like ipsec or gra right it's going to tell you what what tunnel you have to use to reach the other side so yeah so that's good moving on let's move to the data plane part right so we talked control which is good let me just get this off i like doing this it's really fun okay cool so from a data plane perspective what are we what are we planning to do in data plane so data plane is actually very very simple nothing because there is no a new protocol like omp right it's going to be as simple so here to explain this i'm going to use the edge one and maybe a h2 over here so i'll probably put a three <clears throat> and to show you the underlay there'll be an underlay right just remember that sd man is not removing the underlay underlay is still there right so let's say your service provider is giving your uh you know mpls and you probably have another probably your internet right and they have connectivity like this you know between probably this guy also has is connecting to both of them and all of that so your edges are connected to the underlay probably via multiple you know uh multiple 
colors. Let's start using the word colors instead of transport because that helps you to understand. But yeah, so what we do in data plane is you just need to know that uh, in um, Viptela, they came up with a terminology called VPN, right? You would have heard this is our normal, don't confuse this with a normal VPN. This is this VPN basically corresponds to something like a VRF in Cisco. It is actually literally a VRF, right? It's just a different terminology which they, uh, which Viptela, you know, used and they are continuing using here, right? So <clears throat> VPN is basically nothing but VRF. In VH, it appears as VPN, but in in a if you're using a Cisco's uh, router, in uh, you know over here, it would appear as a VRF, right? So just like VRF, your VPN has its own routing table, right? So um, there are two VPNs which are considered to be reserved, which is you know, VPN uh, 0 and VPN 512. So VPN uh, 512 is for management, right? Uh, out of band management, uh, not very important, but yeah, if you want to do some kind of out of band management on each of these edges, you're going to use the VPN 512. But VPN 0 is the transport side VPN, right? So transport side, so all these interfaces which you see are in the transport side. And all of these will be in that VPN or VRF, right? VPN 0, right? It will be in this VPN 0. Right, so what, what are the functionalities of VPN zero? It basically terminates your, uh, uh, you know, connections over here. What terminates your IPsec connections, which will be formed, you know, between your various, uh, I, like I showed earlier, we'll probably have a IPsec tunnel between one and two, we might have it between one and three, maybe three and two and so on, right? So it helps you to terminate that VPN zero will help you to terminate that IPsec, right? Um, and the system IP, which we talked earlier, basically belongs to VPN zero, right? Um, and uh, for for the connections with the vSmart, right, uh, we can still use uh, VPN 0 or 512, uh, you know, because like I said, we are going to have connections, control connections going from edges to the vSmart, right? In my earlier previous slide, I showed you how the OMP sessions are formed between the edges and the smart. So for that, you can still use 0 or 512, right? The good thing about this is, uh, or the data plane here is that when when the packet is flowing from, say, one edge to the other edge over here, we are going to retain something called, we are going to add something called as a VPN tag, right? So this VPN tag basically allows you to have like what now you can have multiple VPNs behind here, right? Like multiple customers, you can have probably VPN tag of 10, 20, 30, 40. So all these, uh, you know, tags are going to be sent along with the packet. So how is this helpful? This is very helpful because this is where the segmentation capability of SD1 comes into play, right? Now you can use the same tunnel here, which has been created, right? One single tunnel, which has been created, you can use the same tunnel for transferring multiple of, you know, any of these VPN packets, right? If you look, compare this with the traditional networking, right? You had to create separate tunnels and you had to put all those separate tunnels in its own VRFs, right? For any communication to happen. But here I can do all of that in single tunnel, you know, because the VPN tags are going to be sent, right? So, <clears throat> so that's mainly which I wanted to talk here, right? I wanted to say that, you know, this whatever you see is basically your IPsec tunnel. There will also be some kind of a BFD session happening running on this IPsec, which probably you'll get to know as and we do laps. BFD is going to be there mainly to check if, you know, if the other, if the tunnel is up, right? Uh, it, it, in order to detect if the key lock, right? Uh, which is basically the, session, you know, the other side, the edge or the interface, you know, if it is up or not, you can also use this BFT to kind of monitor traffic, right, jitter and do all of that, right? But mainly just for a minute, you know, for this video or for, for overview, just understand that, <clears throat> just understand the workflow that uh, between the V edges and the V smarts, we are going to have OMP sessions, right? The OMP sessions are basically, OMP is a new protocol, just like your BGP, which will help, uh, uh, you know, which will help exchange the routes right between the VHS and the VSmart, and the VSmart will then relay those routes to the other edges, just like a route reflector. There is not going to be any kind of uh, OMP sessions between the VHS, right? Between the edges, van edges. Second thing is, once the routes have been exchanged, everything is good. Now comes the interesting piece where you can form the IPsec tunnels <coughs> between the edges. This is the data plane. So now, now that you are forming the IPsec tunnels, you'll be able to transport or you'll be able to um, send traffic from one edge to the other, right? 
and the prerequisite for these IPsec tunnels is basically your um, OMP, OMP route exchange. Okay, great. So, <clears throat> give me one second. All right, so uh, coming to the last uh, part of the discussion, which is going to be the management plane, right? So, let me just clear this out. Right, so we talked about the control plane, we talked about the data plane, last part which would be the management. And management is, you know, is also equally important um, and it's very important to understand how it all plays around, right? So <clears throat> to explain the management part, let me just, uh, uh, you know, probably put in a very simple picture again. You have your vManage, you have your vSmart, and uh, let's also put your edges, edge one, probably two, and let's put your three. This is going to be a, uh, you know, diagram, which is going to be used always to uh, showcase anything in uh, your, uh, this thing, right? So, SD1. So this is going to be, say, your MPLS, and you have uh, maybe your internet, right? Another transport here, right? These are connected this way. Right, and all of that, so right, that's good. So <clears throat> now to explain uh, uh, the management, so I want to just highlight two important things here. So for management point of view, you can do all your management sitting on the vManage over here, right? So I told, I have talked earlier, uh, if I want to show again, so these are going to be the management sessions between the VHS, right? So you're gonna have these management sessions you know, via the VHS where you can push the configs, right, down to the VHS. Um, you can all, obviously, we'll have a management session here as well, because if there is some configuration to be done on the vSmart, you can do as well, right? So that's going to be the management sessions throughout. Now, what you can do using these management sessions is that one I want, which I want to highlight is templates, right? The first one, which I love the most is the, uh, or let's just say templates, those convert to conflicts between device and this thing for now. Let's say just templates. So what are these templates? Templates help you do um, um, do a lot of provisioning on the fly, right? So you want to kind of configure a new feature on probably 10 of your branches. You wanna probably enable a new feature. You wanna do any kind of configuration. You can, you have the flexibility to create this template over here and you know, provision it, schedule it, push it down at a click of a button, right? So that's a very interesting piece of the management plane. Right? And you can do that, everything sitting on the vManage. Second thing is another in important piece, which is the policies, right? So here's a different color here, right? Now, personally for me, the, the best part of the SD-WAN is the policy, right? Because whatever we have done till now, it is all about bringing up your controllers, bringing up the edges, bringing up the vManage, right? That's all going to be like a one-time activity. But on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Your day two, day three operations are mainly all around going to be, you know, uh, around creating policies, creating these intelligent policies, right? Which, which is basically the core strength or the core USB of your SD1 technology, right? So let's just talk a little bit more on the policies. What kind of policies do we have, right? So I would say I would want to group this into four policies, right? So the first one is your centralized uh, control policy. So let's say centralized control, right? And where does this happen? This happens on the vSmart over here, right? So um, use a different color, uh, right? So this centralized control policy is something which you put here. So I'm going to say centralized control policy, right? Which happens over here. What, what does this mean is, it controls how the routes are learned and advertised via the OMP sessions, right? I've told you that we are basically learning the routes via the OMP sessions going up, you know, towards the vSmart from the edges, right? Now imagine there might be a case where you don't want to share all the routes from edge one to edge two. So you can put a policy. You can put, just like how you would put a route map in your traditional networking. Similarly, you can create a policy, right? You create the policy obviously on vManage, but you can deploy this policy on vSmart. So that's why I've placed it over here, right? So you put the policy and vSmart will behave accordingly, will 
you know, we'll on, we'll try to do some kind of route filtering and, you know, only those routes will be pushed, right? So you can uh, define policy for your control pane, which is centralized control policy, right? Second is your centralized data policy. What is centralized data policy? So centralized data, right? So the centralized data policy, I would place it over here, right down here. There's a different color. Right, I would put it here centralized data policy here near the edge right over here What this does is it performs actions based on you know actual data packets right because you see the data packets are finally generated from the edge right somewhere from behind here right the data packets are coming on the edge so on the edge you will have This policy which can decide what has to what it has to do with that traffic, right? You can do something basically like your access list. You want to permit something. You want to deny something. You want to, you know, monitor something. You can do all of that, right? And that's something which you do sitting here, right? So that is your central data policy, right? Uh, just note here the word central. What is the word central in both the cases? It means is that centralized means that the configuration which is part of this policy will not go on the box, right? Will not be put on the box. So this is your actual router so that configuration will actually not go on that box rather in case of centralized data policy that configuration whatever is needed will be stored in the edge memory but it doesn't go inside the local config which means if i do show run over here you'll not be able to see that policy right so that's why you call it as centralized right it is not local now comes the local part right so when you're talking local it's going to be over here local what is local local uh, Control policy. Let's start with the local control and the last one is going to be local data, right? Very simple to remember, right? Centralized control Centralized data local control and local data, right? So what is going to be our uh, uh, Local control policy. It's basically for your service side uh, VPN Right, so it's again. I would place it here local control policy here at the edge itself and it is mainly for your service uh, side uh, you know uh, uh, vpn right if you want to do some kind of route filtering when i say service side you know this side right uh, towards the uh, uh, towards the service towards the towards your lan and all of that not towards the transport this this side is your transport whereas towards uh, the service is the one which is below so if you want to do some kind of traffic filtering over there you know um, some kind of uh, play around with the routing and all of that, you could use this policy, right? And when I say local, it basically means that that policy would go into the running configuration, right? It would basically go on the box. And the last part is the local data policy, which is, uh, see I'm running out of colors, just use this. Local data policy also sits over here, right? On the edge, so all these guys basically sit here, right? And local data policy is similar to your centralized data policy, it's just that, Except that you know this basically parts becomes part of the edge local config um, And it is mainly applied per interface as opposed to what you would apply here um, The centralized data policy uh, right you would have probably applied it per VPN because it is more on the transport side This one you would basically apply it, you know uh, <clears throat> Per interface you'll again get to know all of these when we play around, you know with the policies on the dashboard But I just wanted to show that you know how all of these uh, fits the story, right? <coughs> and uh, the most important part, like I said, of the whole ST WAN solution is the policies, right? And so we have covered uh, the control plane, the data plane, and the management plane. And we have also talked earlier about <coughs> why we need ST WAN, what are the various components um, of ST WAN as well, right? So hope this serves as a good refresher. And uh, uh, do tune in because I'm planning to create some labs to explain some of these topics life with a topology and lab right okay thanks for watching guys have a good day